What is up guys? My name is Lex. It is kind of a nasty, overcast, rainy day here in Florida and I'm honestly not feeling my best. I'm a little bit congested, a little bit uh, cold, flu symptoms. I'm recovering from a cold, but I've got to suck it up today because today is day number two of a multi-day tournament here at the Hard Rock. They're doing a huge tournament series this week and next week and event number one was a $400 opening event. There was eight flights for this tournament. I played in flight number two. I ran pretty good early on. I cracked kings with ace jack. I doubled up with pocket kings and I ended up bagging 89,000 chips leading into today, which is gonna be good for about 15 big blinds or so. So anyway, we are heading here to the hard rock. We're gonna be getting down to the action. Hopefully we can run good. There is an insane prize pool for this tournament. There's $2 million in the prize pool. There's $280,000 for first place. So I could turn my $400 investment into a $280,000 investment. It's raining. It's wild. Let's get off the camera. Let's get in there. Let's get down to the table. Let's get to the action. Let's go. I make my way into the Hard Rock Casino over here to the ballroom, which is actually a different location than the poker room. It's on the other side of the casino. This is where they run all of their big tournament series. In this voiceover, if you guys are noticing my voice sounding a little bit groggy, it's because I'm still getting over this sickness here. This is two days after this tournament, and I actually had to go to the urgent care earlier today. My lungs were filled with congestion. I had to get an inhaler and some antibiotics, but that wasn't gonna stop me from making a video for this week. So I'm here, I'm pushing through. Luckily the inhaler helped a lot to loosen up my airways and allow me to breathe just enough to make this video for you guys. We're starting here level number 17, blinds at 3,000, 6,000. I went through the blinds once, so now I have about 12 big blinds and get dealt in, ace king offsuit. The early position players fold and now the action's over here on the low jack and he decides to raise to 18,000, so a 3x raise. There's just only one option here with around 12 big blinds, ace king, and that is all in. Basically a dream spot for us. Ace King versus King Jack. We hit an ace on the flop and an ace on the river to get the full double up for 74,000 chips plus the two and a half big blinds that were already dead in the middle. Starting off this day number two pretty good with a full double up. In tournaments, you're just trying to outlast your opponents. Already about 100 people have gotten knocked out from today. We're now in level number 18. Blinds are at 4,000, 8,000. I have pocket fives now with around 20 big blinds. I think from an earlier position, I think this could be a fold or a raise. I think I have a little bit too many big blinds to just open jam all in. So I decide to raise here to 2x, just a min raise. The cutoff player who seems like an action player makes to call and every other player folds. Heads up to ace, three, deuce, all clubs. So we flop second pair here on this board. I think I'm just trying to check and get to showdown. He's gonna have a lot of ace X holding, some pocket pairs, some suited broadways. So I check and he checks back. Turn card six of diamonds. I'm just gonna continue to check, but I noticed on the flop, my opponent just looked very nervous. It felt like he had flopped a monster. So when I checked to him again, and he bets out 20,000 really quick, I feel like he flopped a huge hand. I don't think I can ever call here with pocket five, so I fold. I feel like you got a really big hand. Like, flopped it or something. <laughs> After folding, I tell my opponent it feels like he flopped it, and he was nice enough to show me king nine of clubs for the flopped nut flush. A few hands later, I am all in here from the small blind with ace king offsuit. The big blind folds, and we end up taking down two bigs here. We have squeaked by now, made it to the first break of the day. 441 people left. I now have 132,000 chips. Blinds are at 5,000, 10,000, so I still have about 13 big blinds. 
Throughout this level, I'm all in four times, and I'm gonna show you guys just a quick little montage of all those hands. I asked for a pair, they gave me ace high. Well, unfortunately, I picked up some big hands, ace-king, pocket tens, ace-jack, and I didn't get any action. However, that's fine with me. We ended up taking down the blinds each time, and now our stack is up to 175,000, which is good for 17 big blinds. Right when you start to feel comfortable in the tournament, the blinds go up. Level number 20 now, 342 people left, so I have outlasted around 300 people so far today. The blinds are going up again, 6,000, 12,000. In this hand, I am in the under the gun position. I have eight big blinds left, and I peel back king 10 of diamonds. The chart says under the gun, eight big blinds, king 10 suited all in for us. Eight big blinds going in the middle. The player to my left who had been playing tight the entire day now rejams all in. So I think to myself, oh shit. And then the middle position player snap calls his all in. So I go all in for eight big blinds. Another player goes all in for around 15 to 20 big blinds, and a middle position player snap calls that all in. Well, the action's not over yet. The button, who has about 150,000 chips, is now in the tank for over two minutes. This is just all bad news for me. One, we got snap jammed on to our left, and then snap called by the middle position player. Either one of them or both of them have a big pocket pair or ace king. Now that the button is thinking for so long, he probably has a big pair as well, or he has ace king, which sucks for us. That takes away some of our outs potentially. Eventually the button folds and later said he had ace king offsuit. We turn over our cards, king 10 of diamonds versus pocket jacks and the middle position player has pocket queens. We are completely crushed until the board comes out 10 high. A great flop for me. Any 10 or king will give us the lead until the turn card is the jack of diamonds. So now our 10 or king is no good. However, we do pick up the king high flush draw one time, diamond on the river. Diamond! Pack it up. Damn. No diamond for us this time, which means we are officially out of the $400 multi day tournament. No $280,000 for us this time. It doesn't matter what place you get, it's always disappointing busting out of a tournament unless you win the thing, which I haven't been able to do yet. 285th place out of over 6,000 entrants, not too bad. I feel good with the way I played, however, we're not done yet. I make my way over to the other side of the casino and sit down with a 510 game. First hand here, there's a straddle, a raise to 75, a button call 75. I decide to squeeze here in the small blind to $400. Initial raiser folds, but the button comes along with a call. When the button player calls once and then calls my three bet, I think he's gonna have hands like ace king, ace queen, and some pocket pairs. So when the board comes out six, three deuce with one club, I wanna start a C bet here, looking to potentially jam all in on the turn if I pick up some equity. So I start out with a smaller sizing bet here of $275. Unfortunately for us, the button decides to jam all in. He goes all in for 1600 
with king high, no draw, can't do anything but fold. In this next hand, there is three limps for $10. I'm in the big blind with queen 10 of hearts, a hand that is just a little bit too strong to be checking behind. I think I can bump this up and either take down the dead money preflop or go heads up with our hands. So I make it $85 here in the big blind. The under the gun player calls and every other player folds. So I'm expecting him to have some smaller pocket pairs or some suited connectors. So when the flop comes out, king 10, nine, two diamonds with second pair. I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna see bet here and he'll fold, but when I bet out $100, he comes along with a pretty quick call. Like I said pre-flop, I'm expecting him to raise some of his big Broadway cards, his pocket tens, his pocket nines. So when he limp calls pre-flop, I put him on some smaller suited connectors and some smaller pairs. So when he calls on this flop, I do think he's gonna have a flush draw a lot of the time. Turn eight of clubs and now I slow down and check over to him. And checking is not what he wants to do. He wants to put out a bet of 250 bucks. Now, this does surprise me. Like I said, he limp called preflop. Maybe he could have been trapping with a hand like ace king or king queen, but with second pair in a gut shot, he could potentially be bluffing here with some flush draws. I got to see the river, so I come along with a call. The dealer collects our chips and puts out the final card of the six of clubs. This board has gotten very wet and connected. The back door flush draw got there with the clubs, but the front door diamond draw misses, which is actually kind of what I put him on to begin with. I check over to him and he continues to fire now for $550. Now, in my head, I'm thinking to myself, man, this just doesn't make any sense. He called on the flop bet the turn, and now is betting big here on the river when the backdoor flush gets there. The reason that this bet doesn't make too much sense is that when he bets this sizing on this river, he's representing a very strong hand like a flush or a straight. Now, I guess he could have flopped it with queen jack. However, I don't think he has many 7x holdings in his hand. Maybe he has pocket 7s, but would that call the flop and then bet the turn? It's possible he could have 7 8 suited, that would call the flop, but would that hand bet the turn? I just don't think so. He could have some flushes like some 10x of clubs or some 9x of clubs hands. However, I feel like some of those hands may check back the turn as well. So I'm trying to think to myself, what hands would call the flop, would bet the turn when checked to, and then now continue for this sizing on the river? In these situations, I like to just go with my gut. My gut is telling me he's bluffing here, maybe with a missed diamond draw. So I decide to flick in the call with second pair and he shows king seven of spades for top pair on the flop, top pair on the turn, and a straight on the river. We get completely owned by this under the gun player. I'm all for making light hero calls, but I think that one was just a little bit too spewy. There's an under the gun call. I have pocket jacks and raised to $50. I end up getting four callers. So going five ways to a three, six, four board, a pretty connected flop. There's definitely some two pairs, straights and sets that my opponents can have. But in this situation, I'm just gonna bet. And if somebody raises me, I'll just put them on a better hand. So I make it $105, folds all the way back over to the first under the gun limper who makes the call. So now we're heads up in position to the queen of hearts in the turn. It's possible he could have called and slow played a big hand on the flop, but this queen of hearts just isn't going to hit him very often when he calls on the flop. So I'm just going to continue to bet for $200, try to get value from a 6x hand and also a hand like ace 5, 6 5, 3 5, 4 5, all these hands that have a pair and open-ended. When he snap calls my bet, I put him on a straight draw and a pair. So we're looking to fade a deuce or a seven. And unfortunately, we do not fade that. The river card's a deuce and he leads out very quickly for $350 and I fold. I got a pen of salvo. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I haven't done one of these in over a year. Tilt break, a tilt break. A tilt break is when you feel like you're going to punt off thousands of dollars at the poker table and instead of doing that, you come outside, you breathe, you get some fresh air, and you try to calm yourself before you just steam off your entire fucking stack. Well, that's how I feel right now. I'm super steamed up. I don't know why. Um, I did lose a big pot with queens when I first sat down. 
misplayed that hand. Just misplayed a hand with Queen, Ten of Hearts. Just lost with Pocket Jacks. I don't know, the tournament tilt maybe got me a little bit. Uh, a lot of other, like, really small things are kind of adding up. Like, it's, like, really bad weather today. It's super crowded here, really packed. The shuffle machine at our table is, like, malfunctioning, so it's taking forever. And all these things combined are just, like, putting me on massive tilt. So I decided to come out here and take a little break. And uh, talking to the camera actually helps. It's, like, somewhat uh, therapeutic or whatever. But uh, game is really good, so I don't want to stay out here too long. But I felt super steamed up after that pocket jack sand so gonna take a little bit of a breather out here and get back in there i take about five minutes and head back in and immediately look down at ace king in the big blind there's a raise to 50 dollars by an action player i decide to re-raise here to 250 dollars he comes along with a call which doesn't surprise me this guy is very nice and loves to mix it up loves to get in there and play a lot of hands he also likes to bluff as well. So when the flop comes out 667 six, rainbow, we do completely miss. I decide to check over to him and he pretty quickly bets out 300 bucks. Yes, we have ace high and he's betting a big sizing, but like I said, he is definitely capable of bluffing here with ace high on this board versus this player in a three bet pot. I gotta see the turn, which is what I do. I put in a call and the king of diamonds comes out here on the turn. So we end up making top pair top kicker i do think he's gonna check this one back a lot of the time so i decided to go with an exploitative lead and make it 325 bucks this lead is kind of weird however if i did float him on the flop with an ace queen of diamonds or ace jack of diamonds i may want to lead out here as a semi bluff so if i have the hand that i'm trying to represent sometimes i gotta lead out here which is what i do he makes to call for 325 and we go to the jack of clubs on the river I want to bet a sizing that all of his pocket pairs can call. Not too big. I'm hoping he'll get sticky with pocket nines or pocket tens. I bet out 475 bucks. Right after I put out this bet, he reaches for his big chips, making it look like he's going to raise. And I think to myself, if he raises me here on this river, I'm going to be sick to my stomach. I may have to take a whole entire week off, but it doesn't come to that. He ends up folding. We don't get paid off here. However, we do win a pot, which is nice. Our first pot of the day, the chips are going in our direction. Maybe this is the momentum we need to try to get even on the day. Moving on, the straddle is on in this hand. It's 5, 10, 25. The button opens up the action here to $80. I peel back queens in the big blind, a hand we definitely want to be raising it up for value. So I make it $280. She started the hand with 2000 bucks, which is less than 100 big blinds with the straddle on. So I don't want to go too big. I want to price her in with most of all of her hands she's opening up here with. She does come along with a call and we see kind of an unfortunate flop. Ace, seven, three, two clubs. However, this is a board where I'm just going to be range betting on. I'm going to have aces, ace, king, ace, queen. So I continue for $150. The button comes along with a call. So I put her on an ace, a flush draw, or maybe a pair underneath the ace. The turn is the jack of diamonds, which I think is a really bad card. Now we're losing to any ASEX holding, and we're also now losing to pocket jacks. I slow down and check. I have a bad card in my hand, the queen of clubs. I want her to have all the queen X flush draws here, like queen 10, queen 9, queen 8, king queen of clubs. But given the fact that I have that club in my hand, it's less likely she has flush draws. So when she bets out $450 on this turn, I think we are just always beat here. I'm just about to fold my cards, but then I think to myself, well, maybe I could turn my hand into a bluff. I could have aces and I can have ace king. Maybe she has a hand like ace five or ace 10, maybe ace queen. If I jam all in here for her last $1,200, she may hero fold that top pair. I then decide that that would probably be a punt. Maybe if I had pocket kings, it would be a better play. So I fold and she is nice enough to show me that she had me completely crushed. Pocket sevens for a set on the flop. After seeing that set, I am so glad I did not go all in there with pocket queens. Next up, I have 10 nine of diamonds. Under the gun limps for $25 and I ISO raise to $100. My ISO raise does not work when under the gun plus two calls 100, the hijack player calls 100, the button calls 100, the big blind calls 100 and the under the gun player calls 100. 
So we're six ways to ten of spades, eight of diamonds, deuce of diamonds. We flop top pair and the ten high flush draw. We do have a very strong hand, but six ways to the flop. I actually think this could be a hand we're just trying to pot control with and try to get to the river. However, it doesn't come to that when the big blind leads out for a big sizing of $400. He's got about $2,000 left in his stack. The under the gun player folds and now the action's back over on me. If we were heads up here, I would consider putting in a raise, but given the fact that I still have three extra players behind me, I think the best option here is just to call. The other three players next to act fold and when the big blind leads out on this flop, I think he's gonna have some sets and some 10x holding. So I have to proceed with caution we of course miss our flush on the turn with the three of hearts, but now a very weird thing happens when the big blind bets smaller than he bet on the flop. He bets out $375. I find this to be very odd. One, because he let out into all these people. I felt like he was very strong. And then now when he bets smaller on this turn card, I feel like he most likely has a hand like King 10, Jack 10 or Queen 10, a top pair holding that he's not very, very comfortable with, but he doesn't want to check and allow me to get a free river card. So the way he's played this hand, I do think he has me slightly out kicked with a 10x holding. So what should we do? Should we call and try to hit a nine or a diamond, or should we maybe raise and try to get him off a single pair hand? I've never seen this player before. He bought him for $2,500. He seems a little bit timid. Maybe he could fold out a hand like King 10 or Queen 10 if we jam all in. If he calls our all in, we still have a ton of outs. So I decide to go for it here and rip it all in. All in. All in. All in. Ship it. I put him all in for his last $1,600. He doesn't snap call right away, which is great. That means we didn't run into a slow played over pair or a set. And I don't even think he really has two pair either once he starts thinking. I'm obviously hoping for a fold, but if he does call, like I said, we still have a lot of outs. It is still possible that we could be ahead. We could be ahead of a hand like Ace X of Diamonds, maybe a nut flush draw that he let out with and then let out smaller on the turn. That's possible. Let's try to think positive here. He thinks for over two minutes and eventually calls. I have a 10. <laughs> nice. Look at him. Oh, dude. I, yeah. I thought I was crushed. I didn't think you had that. I was just going to text him. King on the river is no good for us and we end up losing over a $5,000 pot here versus 10 deuce for two pair. However, I'm not unhappy with the way I played this hand. I think going all in there on the turn versus that sizing is a fine play. We have so many outs, a lot of equity. We could possibly get him to fold out a better hand and given the fact that he tanked for over a minute with two pair, maybe he would have folded a king 10 or queen 10 hand. However, it does suck. We did just lose over $2,500 and my opponent ends up leaving the table within about five minutes of taking my chips. I am getting absolutely crushed this session. I have no idea how much I'm down, but all I know is I've lost some big pots and really haven't won any big pots. However, in this hand, when I call a $25 strata with pocket fours, the flop comes out jack 4-4. Four, four. We flop quads. I think we're going to win this one. I check, straddle checks, cutoff checks, and button checks. Turn seven of clubs, I bet out $65, and I swear, by the time my chips hit the felt, everybody folds extremely fast, and we win the complete minimum with quads. The only good thing about this table and this day is one of the players brought his dog with him. Look at this little guy sleeping here. Dogs of the vlog in this hand. I pick up Cowboys from early position, raised to $75, and nobody calls. Next up here, last hand of the night, I got pocket jacks, I raise, my opponent calls with king jack, flop comes out king high, and we lose this one, and I end up calling it a night. Rogan. What's up? Well, that may have been 
the worst poker session I've ever played in my entire life. I ended up losing $5,900 in a single poker session, and I feel like the only person to blame is myself. I am not happy with the way I played. I felt like I punted off my stack. I was playing too aggressive. I was getting on tilt. I was making really bad hero calls, and it cost me over $5,000. I don't know. I do feel like there is a trend, though, something that I've been noticing over the last year and a half. I feel like when I'm on an upswing and I'm winning money, which I have been the last two months, I'm on a 35K upswing until uh, Sunday, that when I'm on an upswing and I'm winning, I actually tend to sometimes play worse poker because I think to myself, well, I'm up 10K in the month, what's a $600 bluff? Or I'm up 10K in the month, doesn't matter if I lose 2K here. And I actually play worse when I'm on an upswing. I play maybe too aggressive, I make too light of call downs, I play too loose preflop, and it costs me a lot of money. But when I'm on a downswing, I've noticed that when I'm on a downswing and I'm losing, I actually play better poker. I play more disciplined preflop, I play better ranges, I don't punt off my stack as much, and I just play better poker when I'm on a downswing. So there's just a weird, a weird dynamic going on there that um, when I'm actually winning, I play some of my worst poker. So I'm going to really try to work on that. But tonight, right now, it's Tuesday night at 1 a.m. I just finished up the long voiceover that you guys just watched. And earlier today, I went across the street here to the urgent care because I was feeling pretty terrible. And I still kind of, uh, my chest is pretty congested. But last night and earlier today, I was having trouble taking big deep breaths. I had a bunch of congestion a bunch of phlegm and it just wasn't feeling good so I went over there they gave me a z-pack they told me that I had acute bronchitis they gave me an inhaler and the inhaler worked wonders I took a couple puffs and I could breathe again and I was able to breathe enough to make the video so thankful for modern medicine to allow me to continue to make videos for you guys and to be able to breathe so that's nice but there is one other thing that I want to mention before ending this video. Tonight is Tuesday. The day I lost $5,900 was Sunday, but yesterday, a Monday, I went in and I played 5, 10, 25, no limit. I bought in for $2,500 and I ended up cashing out for over 10,000. I had an insane session yesterday. I bought in for 2500 cashed out for over 10000 in just about four hours. I profited $7,900 yesterday in a 510 game. I ran super good. I cracked pocket aces in a four bet pot with pocket jacks. The flop came jack high. I stacked my opponent. I got there on a couple big semi bluffs. One of the big hands of the, of the night was when I four bet kings and got three callers and ended up winning that hand. So it was just an insane day. But I somehow got myself out of a huge hole, losing $6,000 the very next day, coming back and winning $8,000. Now, unfortunately, I didn't film any of the sessions because I only film once or twice a week. I had already filmed for the week on uh, Sunday, so I didn't film yesterday. Kind of unfortunate, but like I said, I want to show you guys the ups and the downs. Oh, I want to show you guys uh, you know, what it's like to play poker for a living, and sometimes you get completely crushed. And I was lucky enough to get it back all the next day. But um, I'm going to head inside after taking him on a long walk. Try to get some sleep. Try to recover. Try to feel better. And uh, hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. This video is coming out the day before Thanksgiving. So anybody out there who is celebrating Thanksgiving, I hope you guys have a great day. Eat some food. Celebrate with your family. And I'll be back next week for some, for some more poker videos for you. Until next time, I'll see ya.